Hello and welcome. Let's look at what Flex Gateway is and how it is different from a conventional Mule Gateway. It is important to understand as both the gateways play an important role depending on the environment setup and on the basis of the network design. In this session, I try to cover different topics such as conventional gateway, cluster setup, deployment of a simple API and a flex gateway. Please note, throughout this session, the term on-prem refers to on-premises data center setup and the term cloud refers to MuleSoft Cloud or Mule Control Plane. Conventional Mule Gateway Let's understand conventional Mule Gateway. The diagram indicates an on-premises setup to host APIs and a cloud control plane and in this case specifically Mule Control Plane. We have defined boundaries like cloud boundary and on-prem boundary. A dashed line or a fragmented line separates both the boundaries. For ease of understanding, we are seeing API 1 and API 2 deployed on the on-premises servers. More details will follow in the video, but for now we have two APIs separated by two different mule runtimes that use individual CPUs. On the cloud, we have a gateway, a conventional mule gateway placed on the control plane of the mule soft. This gateway acts as a proxy and talks to API 1 and API 2. We also see here a user who is accessing the API 1 and API 2 through a cloud gateway. A connection is established between the gateway and a proxy endpoint and a user. Usually, these gateways are deployed under protected layers. Essentially, here is where various organizations API policies are defined and applied and maintained as well. Let's look at a simple hello world program that has a data weave component which points and prints the server details like the host name and the IP. This flow is a simple flow that takes the input in the form of a post request, logs the payload and returns the server detail. Here we see that the hello world program is developed and exported as a dot jar build artifact and is being uploaded to a cluster based setup. This shows that we are uploading a hello world dot jar build artifact to the cluster. What it does is it picks the uploaded hello world dot jar and deploys simultaneously to two servers that are on a specific runtime. A proxy is defined and is deployed on the cloud hub that consumes 0.1 Vco. Now that the applications are deployed on the cluster, let's understand how conventional Mule Gateway works. We follow a few steps to create a Mule Gateway, but once created, here is how it looks like. We need to pay attention here to understand and note the implementation URI and proxy URL. Make a note of the proxy application name as well. Please look around with the proxy console to understand various notations and graphs. This will be handy while analyzing the request and response data. You can also see the utilization of 0.1 Vco for a proxy app. No Vcos on the cloud is used for Flex Gateway and you can guess why. This diagram provides a deployment view of both the gateways. Although we cover the Flex Gateway as a last topic in this session, this will give you an idea of how the placing of a gateway happens. Let's draw a boundaries here again. We are calling out on-prem environment and a MuleSoft environment. On-prem has got clusters of two Mule runtimes and they are physically connected. On the Mule control plane, we have an API manager and a runtime. On the control plane, a gateway is defined and it is associated with the control plane. On the on-prem, we have another gateway associated and this is none other than the Flex Gateway. By now, you might know that the Flex Gateway is closer to the data centers and customer systems. User 1 talks to MuleSoft Gateway and User 2 talks to Flex Gateway. For now, let's understand how these clusters are created. As seen in the previous diagram, we are clustering two Mule runtimes that are running on individual CPUs. Let's call it as MS AWS S1 and MS AWS S2 nodes. You can see that both of them have started. 
the cluster status here is in an amber color and this is due to a communication failure but that is fine for now the cluster will still respond it is important to understand the type status and the star marked green indications as well multicast says that the nodes communicate automatically within each other they get detected automatically in other words this means that you can add the nodes dynamically without restarting the cluster you need to understand that many network do not allow multicast unicast is contrary to the multicast the star marked green circle indicates that this is a primary node we start drawing a boundary here again to explicitly call out on prem and cloud environments we are adding the apis separated over two run times This time, the gateway is placed within the on-prem. That means the gateway is closer to the data center and the system in the data center. A user this time accesses the gateway placed on the on-prem. Just to highlight that, we have done this kind of a setup in one of the government organizations already. This gives the best possible options to communicate to the local systems which are closer to the premises or closer to the on-premises systems within the data center. Now that we have a Hello World app created earlier, we shall see how it is deployed over the Flex Gateway. AWS Server C1 is a server with a target type of a cluster. Here is where you can see that the Hello World is deployed. We see that the cluster status has started and note that the IPs, these IPs are the internal IPs casting each other over the multicast network setup. You can also verify that these runtimes are separate and are deployed on their respective runtimes. You can see the Hello World cluster app on both the terminal windows as well. Just to verify, two Hello Worlds are deployed in a cluster marked in blue dotted boxes. The Hello World app resides under Mule Runtime 1 and Runtime 2. When configuring Flex Gateway, we do three important operations get flex register flex start flex and validate flex in this case we get the flex with the curl and this connects to the mulesoft's flex repos and downloads the packages this may take a while depending on your network speed once you get the right resources from the repo it's time to register the flex on the machine where you're running the gateway this step makes sure that a right organization ID is assigned to a right tenant on the Mule Cloud and a connection is established. That means you are informing the Mule control plane to look for a specific flex gateway and monitor it. Here is where the metadata exchange protocols are established and once you have the registration done, it's time to start, check and validate. If you see these outputs after the check and validation, you are good to use Flex. Let's verify them on the control plane as well. We also see that we have configured our Flex gateway to talk to our Hello World and asking Flex to communicate over implemented URL as indicated. Here you can see that OS2 Flex gateway is put on 10.0.2.45 and is pointed to hello world under runtime with a public IP of 13.234.246.244. Just like in any other API monitoring, we can configure and observe the flex gateway monitoring too. The parameters like failed requests, 400 series errors, 500 series errors, average response time, all are monitored from the mule control plane. You can also observe and monitor request by request sizes, request by response sizes, fail you by methods, specifically the get, post and put methods and so on, and also monitor other parameters too. Now that we have configured all of them and understood how the Flex Gateway works or should work, let's check and verify with the test client like Postman tool. Let's test 
the APIs that we have developed under four scenarios. Number one, direct invocation of API on runtime without using the proxy. Number two is access the API mentioned in case one on the MuleSoft gateway, which is a conventional gateway. Number three is direct invocation of API on runtime without using the proxy this time. This is the same API that we wish to respond through the Flex Gateway. In other words, this is the same gateway that we want the Flex Gateway to handle. Number four is access the API mentioned in case three over the Flex Gateway. So in the case one, we invoke the direct API bypassing the proxy and we see the response. In the case two, we invoke the API over Mule Gateway. Note the proxy URL and we see the same response as previous invocation where we bypassed the proxy. In the case three, here again, we are directly invoking the API bypassing the Flex Gateway or proxy. Please note the output. Here, now we invoke the API through Flex Gateway Note the URL again, it's a local data center based IP. The output is same as that of the case 3 where we bypassed the flex proxy. Now please pause and refer to this diagram again and recall what we have seen and what we have performed throughout this session. This should give you a fair idea of how gateways are configured and how they work. I believe you would have understood how the cluster based deployments were configured and how this works in a context that we went through. That concludes the session. Thanks for watching.